Alright guys, the time has come. Final story for today. And here we have an article from my favorite libertarian newsletter, Reason.com. Very high rate of factu uh, factuality and not particularly use of loaded words or biased. Oh, I'm sure it is a little bit in some ways. Uh, the global trade war comes full circle. Economic reality is always more complex than politicians pretend it is. I am learning more and more all the time that that is the truth. Hmm, that's an unflattering picture of Trump. My god, that frown. <clears throat> it has always puzzled me that anyone would believe that protecting the U.S. market with tariffs is a good idea. Yes, U.S. consumers might increase their demand for domestic goods because duties on imported foreign goods make them relatively more expensive. But these duties also create massive market distortions and malinvestments which often backfire against the very industries that are ostensibly being protected. Case in point, the steel industry and Trump's steel tariffs. Back in March 2018, President Donald Trump announced that he would be imposing 25% tariffs on foreign steel. The idea was to make the price of foreign steel so expensive that domestic consumers of imported steel would start to consume more domestic steel. For those who defended the steel tariffs, it didn't seem to matter that, it's not, that at the time, 70% of U.S. steel consumption was already domestically sourced. The president expected more, and the steel executives who disliked foreign competition cheered him along. American steel consumers were suddenly forced to buy more expensive steel, whether foreign or domestic, because the president thought it was a better way for them to spend our money. Never mind that the U.S. steel industry often didn't even produce the type and quality of steel in which the tariffs were imposed. And never mind that steel-consuming American manufacturers and workers begged their government to not punish them for the way they run their businesses. Tariffs went up. As a result of price, the steel went up for a while. The U.S. steel industry fired up its mills, and U.S. steel output went up dramatically for a while. It seemed like it was all working according to Trump's plan for the domestic producers of steel. That is, not for consumers. As U.S. companies were still trying to figure out their options, some had no choice but to shift their demand and increase purchases of domestic steel. The industry responded by adding more capacity than they would have had without the protection. Yet because they were responding to an artificial temporary increase in demand, triggered by the tariffs as opposed to real market signals, they failed to recognize the global economic slowdown and the subsequent reduction in overall demand. As a result, prices of steel went down quite dramatically. That's what we economists call malinvestment, as a result, the older, less productive blast furnace steel mills are now paying a dire price as they're unable to stay profitable even with the foreign competition out of the way. And because misery loves company, the furnace suppliers are in trouble too. In short, uh, the tariff actually seems to be getting in the way of how the market now normally works which is supply and demand. You see the demand, you create supply. The tariff literally resulted in an artificial increase in demand, which did not last. Which, uh, which by the way, I am not an anti-vaxxer, but as a side note, that's also kind of how vaccines work. Your boosts are temporary. You're Because you're getting your immune system to function uh, in a way that is not normally supposed to. And it's the same with the market. You're making it behave in a way that it's not normally supposed to, and it doesn't last. The only way to make it last is if you, if you, is if you keep it up. But you can't just keep that up constantly. Imagine how much of a drain that would be. The foreign competition is actually good for the marketplace. It drives product quality up and prices down. The same as any competition. The economy is more nuanced than politicians pretend it to be. This article is absolutely right. I mean, from what I understand of economic theory, and mind you, my familiarity, I am not an expert, but I know about as much about it as I possibly can without going to school to learn it. So, there you go. And I can always learn more. As Bloomberg's Matthew Townsend and Joe Doe recently reported, suppliers to blast furnaces are sounding the alarm and laying out his vision for iron ore miner Cleveland Cliffs Incorporated. At a recent conference, CEO Lorenko, uh, is that a G or a C? Ah, it's a G. Goncalves 
painted a bleak future for what makes up the overwhelming majority of his current customers. The article adds that since Trump announced the tariff 16 months ago, U.S. Steel has lost almost 70% of its market value, or $5.6 billion, and idled two American furnaces in mid-June that couldn't be run profitably at the lowest prices since 2016. One takeaway from this story is that markets are extremely effective at striking the right balance, taking advantage of dispersed knowledge that the skill politicians lack. There are reasons why consumers were buying foreign steel in the first place. U.S. steel was often too expensive, not the right type or quality, and needed a serious reshaping of the industry that had too many ineff inefficient producers. Another takeaway is the reality is always more complex than politicians pretend it is. A great lesson of economics is that global markets are connected in surprisingly intricate ways. As such, something that looks like a simple fix can quickly turn into a serious issue with unintended side effects. That said, it's hard to feel sorry for these steel ex executives. They've been clamoring for, the clamoring for the protection that may end up doing them in. In fact, one reason for the global slowdown is the Trump trade war, which started with steel tariffs produced uncertainty increased costs and triggered a disruption in the supply chain as the saying goes what goes around comes around yes and for those of you who want to say oh why aren't there any libertarian nations if it's so if it's so wise and so smart i'll tell you why because it doesn't actually serve private interests contrary to what you may think it doesn't actually serve private interests government interventionism serves private interests because governments provide protections Plus, if you start to regulate the market, all a company has to do is come in direct contract with the regulator and pay them off. It's like, it's like paying the ref in a football game. Uh, I mean, come on now. That way, uh, your opponent is regulated and you're not because you bought him off. And therefore, you get special advantages. It's like playing Smash Brothers with the handicaps on. You know the guy that has the handicaps on is going to win, no matter what you do. It's it's the same thing. <laughs> I mean... So, I mean, there you go. It boosted steel production for a little while, but it was an artificial boost, and it didn't last. Again, just like uh, vaccines. They are temporary. Their value is not as much as their supporters would say. Admittedly, I did kind of shoehorn that in, but I couldn't help it because I, I, I honestly saw the comparison. As just a general mechanism and not specifically. The mechanics work fundamentally the same in a sense. Whenever you make something work in a way it's not supposed to, you may get a beneficial result, but it will be only temporary at best. That's just how things are. That's just simple life mechanics. So there, so yeah. If he really wanted to boost, boost steel production, he would try to get out of the way as much as possible. Foreign steel is not our enemy, it is our friend. Make trade deals. It's perfectly fine. Competition is good for capitalism. Even if it doesn't always look like it, the data reflects. Anyway, 